Windows 11 Home 24H2. Again, this computer is not supported. What's up everybody? It's Adam with Adam Tech, and today I'm gonna to be showing you how to install Windows 11 on a non-supported piece of hardware. So we're just gonna go through the whole thing. We're gonna start with downloading the Windows Media Creation tool for Windows 11. We're gonna download Rufus to allow us to bypass the TPM requirements and some of the other requirements. We're gonna search Windows 11 Media Creation tool. And that will take you to Microsoft's official website. So we're not downloading any illegal software here. And we're gonna get Windows 11, create installation media for Windows. Why I don't have the little scroller thing. But we go over here to the download Windows 11 too. So we don't need the download assistant, create Windows media installation. Should just be able to confirm. Language is going to be English and a 64-bit download. So that will just take a little bit of time to download. And in the meantime, while that is downloading, I'm just going to go to the Rufus website. So we're gonna use Rufus. It creates bootable USB media the easy way and will allow you to bypass a lot of the settings within Windows 11. We'll just do the 4.9 EXE, but we're downloading Rufus now. And so we have Rufus on there and we got the uh, image ISO. So we're just gonna go ahead and open up Rufus. We're gonna install that or have it checked for updates just in case, you know, there shouldn't be any of those things. So when you've got Rufus and you've got your little flash drive, you're gonna take your flash drive, plug it into any free USB port, which I think should be one right there. And this is already a blank drive, so you don't have to, if yours is, you know, make sure it's a blank media drive or something that you can format, it will likely ask us to format it and go from there. So Rufus has found an updated version of the DBX file, used to perform if it's... Uh, no. Just go no on that. And then all these settings should pretty much be exactly what you need them to be and being as, you know, as default as they need to be. Standard Windows installation, the GPT partition, um, Scheme, VFI, name is all fine, and NTFS, that's all fine. That's just gonna be how it's gonna be formatting. So advanced format options, we don't need to worry about that either. And then when you go through and you're doing this, you're like, wait a second, what's gonna be the bypass part? That's where they get you. You hit start, and then there'll be more windows that pop up. See that? So remove requirement for four gigs of RAM and secure boot in two, uh, TPM 2.0. That is automatically checked. We wanna keep it checked. So that way that will allow us to do the uh, installation on this non-supported piece of hardware. Remove requirements for an online account, yes. Create a local account with username, yes. And then set regional options to the same, I would do that. Disable data collection, yes. Disable BitLocker automatic, yes. I would recommend doing that yes to all of those. And all device, all data on the device will be removed, yes, yes, yes. And then it's going to just delete and then format and create our flash drive for us. So now that we have our media creation tool set on here, we've got it all kind of set up with everything, we should be able to boot to this, no problem. After you have your flash drive media made, you're gonna to need to boot to it. So make sure it's inserted inside of your computer, make sure the computer is fully turned off. As you press the power button and the computer's turning on, make sure you're quickly hitting one of the corresponding keys depending on what manufacturer of motherboard you have. Most commonly, ASUS is gonna be F8, HP is gonna be F9, MSI is gonna be F11, ASRock is gonna be F11, Dell is gonna be F12, Gigabyte is gonna be F12, and Lenovo is gonna be F12. Check your motherboard documentation for the exact key you need to press. Once that boot menu does pop up on your screen, select the USB boot device that you're going to try to boot to. You don't want to boot to your regular drive, otherwise it'll just go back into Windows. So select your exact boot media and you'll go to the Windows 11 bootloader. Here we go. This is the same laptop and we're going to go ahead and install Windows 11 on it. So uh, we've booted to the boot drive, that flash drive that we created, and now it's just you know, keyboard settings, a lot of these are gonna be defaults and correct. We want to install Windows 11 on our PC. Uh, I agree that everything will be deleted, including my files, apps, and settings. That might not always be the exact case, but just agree to that. You can repair, but we're not repairing. We're just installing Windows 11. I don't have a product key. It's embedded into the operating system and it was Windows 8 Home, so it'll be Windows 11 Home. I accept. I'm just a very fast reader. Y'all saw me accept that. Searching for disks. And then I think this would have stopped me by now if we were not allowed to do what we're doing, but we'll find out. And these are all of our disks here. So, okay, so we can either install it on top of it, which would be a windows.old, which we're not gonna do that. This is just for other purposes. So we have all these disks here, all these different partitions that we can delete. Make sure that you have no important data files on any of these because it will be gone. So we're just gonna start, uh, you can see what disks you have here. Disk zero, if they're all the same number, they all belong to the same physical disk inside your laptop or inside of your computer. So you can see here we have disk zero and then disk one. And the disk one is the name of that partition that we made for that flash drive. So 
clearly we don't want to delete that. And I think Windows is smart enough to not let us delete that partition. We're just going to go through all of disk zero here. And as we delete them, they're going to create an unallocated space and it'll get rid of each partition. And there'll probably be some unallocated spaces in between them. But when we get down here, I'll delete these. You'll see what will happen when we're one partition between unallocated space. It's kind of cool. We delete this last one. So we have unallocated space of 645 megs here, unallocated space of 986 KB here, and then partition one with 464 gigs. When we delete this, we'll see all of these will kind of combine into just one section of unallocated space. It's kind of cool. Cool. And then we just have these other two partitions. Well, only this one other partition to delete. And then that other unallocated space will kind of come together with that one partition. So that's all we have. You don't need to worry about anything with disk one because that was our flash drive boot medium. Windows will start to do the installations and everything like that. But halfway there, not bad. And then what this system will do is it will ask a couple of questions about connecting to the internet and who, what your username is privacy settings, all that sort of stuff. But if you remember in the beginning, I skipped all of that. I made it create an account with my name Monopoly. I skipped the privacy questions and I think I skipped something else with it. So it's gonna just kind of bypass all of that as long as it notices that we have internet connectivity. And I do have it plugged in to ethernet here. It's kind of, that's right where my face is, right? right? Right down there. So I have it connected to ethernet and that ethernet will allow us to hopefully just bypass completely everything else. This IP cam is kind of nice. And then the moment that it will go from this screen to the HDMI out again, I'll go ahead and, you know, we'll just use that. Well, that is really nice and blurry. Thank you there. We're going to go with the IP cam and we're going to just go ahead and shrink. This way we'll just kind of know when it's done installing. What you guys can't see is that it says installing 42%. Please keep your computer on. And then at the bottom, your computer may restart a few times. It's just at a black screen for me. Restarting, rebooting as it will, installing 94%, but we are running Windows 11 on this extremely, very unsupported piece of equipment. Not only does it not have TPM 2.0, even built in it, it's a third gen processor. The system shipped with Windows 8, and this computer was from 2013, I think. But this, it shouldn't give us anything. It should just go straight from here into the Windows login screen because it is connected to Ethernet already. It's not gonna ask us for those settings. It's just gonna go straight through. It's my personal best way of doing the operating system install. So you don't have to worry about all the additional setup tasks, the disk encryption, all that stuff. Believe it or not, it says welcome. Are we really almost there? Really? Finally? Okay. Video out? Okay. It's installing its own automatic driver. I'm just really wanting, there we go. All right, we got it. Okay, cool. Now I can get rid of the IP cam. So on this PC, we're gonna just go ahead and do control shift escape. That's gonna bring up the task manager. That's the easiest way to do that. And we can easily see the performance tab here to show us what we have. We still have that i7-3630QM processor, which is the third gen, still the 16 gigs DDR3 RAM, and this has that NVIDIA GeForce 670M with what, like three gigs of RAM or something like that. It's fantastic, it's made by Asus, awesome laptop. Then we're gonna do about your PC, okay? And about your PC, Windows 11 Home 24H2. Again, this computer is not supported. Thank you so much for watching this video, and I hope it was helpful to you and is able to get you exactly where you need to be. Whether or not you're going to be running Windows 10 for a long time, or you're going to be upgrading to the Windows 11 using this methodology to keep your computer running as long as possible, it's important that you do it with the proper instructions, and that's what I'm hoping to give you here. If you have any questions or want to let me know what method you're doing, definitely leave them in the comments down below. Giving this video a like is always helpful. It helps show the channel that I'm doing something correct. And as well, it can help show others that are also looking for this sort of advice, the proper information that they're going for. As always, if you want to find more information like this, you can check out my plethora of channel videos that I have going on. A playlist might be somewhere around here as well. And subscribing will also make sure that you're seeing all the information as I release it. So thank you again so much for watching. My name has been The Don with The Don Tech. And remember, The Don's got your back. Why is that so blurry though? It's even blurry on here when I look at it. It should be that you touch it and it like automatically unblurs, right? My bad, I pressed the wrong button.